do so. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to make something that I've been wanting to make that I have watched so many videos and read so many recipes, but uh, donuts. I feel like I've been, I, I have researched it and the last time I made, and I don't want to practice them all the time cooking them because they're so fattening, but uh, the last time I made them, I was very happy with the result. So I'm going to do the same thing today. Hopefully the weather's a little different today. It's been raining like almost every day here, but I hope you're all doing well. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you so much for watching. Okay. There's not a lot of ingredients. There's not a lot of rising time. And I did preheat my oven a little bit to make it a little warm for the dough. And uh, I'm, unfortunately, I hope nobody is upset with me, but I had to weigh the ingredients and I don't know what the cup measurement is. Um, I have a, a scale that I use. It's not very good, but it works. And that's how I'll make this recipe. Uh, a lot of the recipes I'll watch are foreign and uh, they use, always use grams or weights. So anyway, I'm gonna, I'll tell you the uh, weights, but I, I kind of change the recipe up a little bit. I have about two thirds cup of bread flour and about a third cup of all purpose flour. And this is 400 grams. And I have 40 grams of sugar, and I'm just gonna half teaspoon of salt. And I always usually put my, my yeast in my liquid, which I, I we don't have to. This is eight grams of yeast. The recipe calls for seven, but I put eight. And this is 200 grams of milk. So I'm just gonna pour it all in. And then we're gonna go to my mixer I oh, would one egg, one egg. And I'll also add, I like to add vanilla bean paste to mine. I just like the, the flavor. Also another secret I learned is a lot of people put a little nutmeg, which I might do. It just gives it a little something. Not, and just about a teaspoon of vanilla. And that's optional, you don't have to do that. But yeah, I, I like, sweet things. And I have some nutmeg right here that's fresh nutmeg. I think I'm gonna put a little bit. I'm sorry I didn't have it out in advance. But this is really, it smells really good. And I don't like a, 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 a lot of nutmeg in anything actually. But I do like it a little bit in here. And I would say it's about a fourth of a teaspoon. But this is what, what it looks like. I've watched so many, I've learned so many tips and tricks from all different people. So we're gonna move to my mixer and mix it up. And then uh, we're gonna add 40 grams of softened butter, unsalted butter, once the dough comes together. This makes a small amount. Last time I had to kind of help my my dough get back on the hook once you put the butter in it. It makes the dough come apart a little bit. But I use a little wooden spoon or a spatula to brush the sides of my bowl. And my mixture is loud, so I'm gonna mix off camera. And then I'll, when when it comes together, I'll show you what, show you what it looks like. You can see in the bowl, this it came together pretty nicely. So I'm gonna knead it just for a little while, and then we'll add the butter but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And, it, and I find that weighing your ingredients is really a more accurate thing to do for baking. But I mean, I use cups most of the time too, like everyone else. It looks a tiny bit wet, but you gotta let it go a little while and, and see how it turns out. And once it comes together, I'm gonna turn it up. Now I'm gonna add my 40 grams of softened, unsalted butter. Now when I make cookies or certain cakes, I like to use salted butter, but for this, I just use unsalted. So now it's gonna go through a process and have to be a little bit longer. And I got it on the side of my bowl. So I'm gonna mix it. 
and I'll chew it. It looks like, and we may have to add like a tablespoon of flour. We'll see. I'm talking about come to pour a little bit once the butter goes in, but just, just keep mixing and it'll come back together. So it looks like right now it's sticking a little bit at the bottom. I'll show you. But I'm gonna knead it for about four minutes. And if it gets too sticky, I'll put like a tablespoon of flour, but you don't want to add too much flour. You want it to be just right. So I'm gonna, and I'm mixing on medium. About four minutes, but I think it's just right. So we're gonna put it in the bowl and let it, put it in the oven. Hold on. I'm gonna use this bowl. And most of the time I have to spray my hands. I have one of those dough scrapers, but sometimes I just, Sometimes I just use my hands. Because it's going to be a tiny bit sticky, but not too sticky. You want a soft dough. That's what I've learned. And I am not an expert. Please don't think that I am. I'm just trying to share some, some knowledge that I, I've learned. And I know I haven't made a video in a week, but we've been cooking. And we've been practicing all kinds of things. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's pretty soft. So you just want to, it's a little sticky, but once you let it rise a little while, you just want to put it into a ball. Once you put a little bit of the oil on it, it just doesn't get sticky anymore. I'm not very good at putting it into a perfect ball, but that's okay. I just put it in here. And then today I'm just going to use, I forgot I have lids for this. So I'm just going to put it in the oven like this and probably for about I'll check it, but you just want it to double in size, uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Just to let you know, I'm not going to turn this on yet, but this is what I used the last time I cooked. I heard, I think, uh, one of the tips that I learned is you fry them in shortening or peanut oil. I had butter flavor shortening and it didn't, it didn't really like make the, make them taste funny, but I only used it once. So what I did was put it in a, and I, I actually used like a fourth cup of, of canola oil. And you can use those oils. I just found that I have better luck when I use the, the shortening. And I uh, also needed to use it because it had been in my cabinet for a while. But um, what was I gonna say? I'm sorry, let's see. Oh, and so it was in my fridge. So I put it in the microwave for a second and I put it in here. I mean, I won't start heating it until we start uh, I don't know how what shape we're gonna make the donuts yet. We, we have to decide. But the the dough, uh, I ended up putting it, a towel over and taking the lid off so it could get warmer. I thought the plastic lid might block some of the heat. And, and I also have a, a thermometer to keep track of the temperature. Unlike most videos you see, I'm gonna be frying these at a lower temperature, about 330 to 335. I, I find that a lot of videos tell you to do 350, 375. And maybe I'm just not good enough at frying donuts, but I find it, I've, uh, I've tried it before and I overcooked them or they cooked on the outside or raw on the inside. It's just, it went too fast. And I'm gonna tell you where I got a lot of tips from. And uh, the channel is D-I-V-I -I space TV. DV TV, something like that. But she's German and she bakes all kind of doughs. But uh, I've, I've really studied her video a lot and her 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 uh, donut recipes. And and, a, and also a lot of Korean channels I watch also fry them at a lower temperature. And when I did it last time and I drained them on paper towels, a lot of people say when you fry it on a lower temperature, they're going to be greasy. They weren't. They were just fine. So you can do what you want, like whatever you think is best. And I, you don't really need a lot, a lot of oil, uh, just a, about three inches. Some people say you have to like fill it up halfway with oil. And I, you don't really have to do that. And you don't have to have a cast iron pan, but I find I, the heat, it, I cannot talk today. I'm so sorry. It's almost like I waited too late to do a video. Like sometimes it takes me all day just to make myself do it. I don't know why I get like that. And now I'm trying to cook supper. This is, I'm gonna cook some kind of chicken stir fry. I'm gonna put cornstarch in here. I got soy sauce in here. I got some vegetables cut up and uh, we love trying new sauces and stuff. 
But uh, I like Chinese food. The only thing that takes time is the cutting the vegetables. And if you get them pre-cut, then it doesn't take any time at all. But it does take a little time to heat it your oil up because you don't want to heat it up too quickly. Because if you get it too hot, the best thing to do is turn it off and let it come back down. And an electric stove is not the easiest way to control heat. But with a lot of practice, you just learn. I find that uh, gas stoves probably a lot easier to work with. But I'm, I'm pretty used to this stove. So anyway, I just wanna let you know, I'll, I'll be using this burner here, not this one. I always cook on this one when I cook other foods. But for this recipe, I'm gonna use the small burner because this pot gets extremely hot on the other side. And uh, I, I don't do well with donuts on, on, when I cook on that side. So now that I talked your head off, I'm gonna check the dough in a second and mix up my chicken and I'll be back. About an hour and this is our dough, well risen. Now, I have a, we just, I, want, I decided to do a donut cutter, which I have one here, but you don't have to have one. You can use a glass and a bottle cap or a piping tip, but it's very puffy. And I'm not gonna make a bunch of them, but I you get a sweet pan, put just a little bit of flour on it, and they they won't take long to rise. They're really soft. So I'm just gonna take it out of the bowl. And last time I didn't even need any flour on my mat, which was awesome. So I'm just going to try to roll it out, which I'm not very good at making a perfect rectangle or anything, but I just roll it out to about a half inch thick. I find that that makes the prettiest ones. And I don't measure, like I just, I just kind of do whatever. And you can re-roll it. Some people roll it out to a a fourth of an inch thick. You want to try to get the most that you can in the first rolling. And you know, I have a problem just making the dough even. I have to really work at it. But it's such a beautiful dough. You could bake this like for cinnamon rolls. You, you could do a lot of things. But I, I don't, I had, I haven't, I don't know why, but I have no desire to make baked donuts. I've been into, <clears throat> I have a, a, a an awesome chicken uh, chicken tender recipe that I wanna do for you guys. It's, it's a Zatarain's mix and it's New Orleans hot and spicy and it is so good. And I just cut them out. The only thing is when they do rise, <clears throat> I don't have the, I don't, I don't have a perfect way of putting them in the oil. You could cut out little squares of parchment paper and then you put the donut on top and then you lay it in the oil and then the parchment paper releases. Oh, I didn't cut that one right. And uh, it keeps your donut shape intact. But I'm too lazy to cut the squares out, unfortunately. But it's so nice, it's easy to, to re-roll but you can refrigerate it and make the rest tomorrow and let the dough rest again, which is fine. This one's gonna be a little thicker, but see, it's not sticking to the mat. This, this mat's awesome. <clears throat> I'm so glad I finally got one. Uh oh, that one didn't cut well. And uh, <clears throat> I turned my stove to uh, medium to start heating my oil. See, this is a little bit uneven. It says okay if they're not perfect. You can also, uh, to make them prettier, there's a, a way she does it on the video where she twists them together to, what do you call it? She rolls it out into two long strips and then she twists them. They're very pretty. But we wanted some donuts with glaze on them today. And we just mixed up a glaze. Uh, we didn't follow our recipe. 
And see how, just see how soft it is. And it's not sticky. It's amazing. I love when it works out that way. Let me see if I can roll one more out. It's gonna be a little bit tougher. And you can make any shape. You can make it the twisted kind. You can do whatever you want. The dough's really easy to work with. Do I do this one? This, no. Yeah, I don't care. I don't want the waste to be wasted. I think I can get, these are gonna be a little bit thicker. And then you can just like roll up balls and fry them. I don't care to fry the donut holes. Why? Uh, I don't know, I just, I find it a little tedious. So I'm just gonna wrap this up and save it. And I could, you know, I could, I could bake this, but I am gonna, it needs to rest, actually, because it's overworked a little bit. Look, nothing stuck to my mat. So I'm gonna cover, cover these. This is what we have right here. And they're not perfectly even, but I did pretty well, you can see. And they, they only have to rise. Well, it depends on how warm your house is, but uh, I usually just stick them back in the oven and it takes like 20 minutes. And I need to check the temperature of my oil. <clears throat> And then I will be back in the oven. While they were in the oven, I put my my stove on, and it's right there at the right temperature. And these are enough for me. They're they're high enough for me. And if I sound like I'm in a hurry, it's kind of what I am because I'm trying to cook supper at the same time. And it's Chinese food, and it goes very quickly. But Elle is helping me, so I'm gonna move the camera to the pot, and then we'll drop the first uh, first two in. Turn my fire down because my oil, my oil, my, my oil is at 340. And I really like it at three, about 335. But I think 340 is okay. Also, we're making a stir fry. Oh no! And once you put the donuts in, the temperature is actually going is to. No, that's uh, yeah. Turn it off. It's good. It's good enough. It's. Is it burnt? I might have missed that. And I'm going to use a chopstick. I forgot the garlic. Can you wait that long? Actually. Okay. You want them on low and then, whoops. I like, I found the chopsticks the easiest way. That's a little bit browner. We just want to make sure that they don't overcook on the outside and they're raw on the inside. My temperature is just right now. Just right. You know, I really want to go for the white line. Like, to me, that's the best. And I had it the other day. Now, not all of them, but uh, they, were, they were really good. We only coated them in sugar, but today we're going to glaze them. They're good with just sugar, cinnamon sugar. You'll have to do a couple minutes on each side, but you want uh, you don't want a lot of bubbles around each one. You want kind of slow bubbles. Did you use all the tools? What they? Did you use all the vegetables? Yes. I can't tell. We don't have to have vegetables. I forgot the garlic anyway, which is the most important ingredient. See, I like, I think that's cooked. They did, they did not take very long. And I just put on a paper towel. I would usually have it be filling on this side of my stove, but we're cooking on that side, so. And these, rose even more when you put them in the oil. And you want, I like to use all purpose flour and bread flour. For the gluten, for the bread flour, and the all-purpose flour, for the tenderness. <clears throat> I never tried to pick them up with a chopstick to put them in the oil, but I don't think I want to. But if you look really close, you can see the vanilla bean seeds in there. Love those. You can't see them once they're fried, though. 
You be very careful. And uh, all my America's Taste Kitchen magazines and uh, Cook's Illustrated say that shortening is the best, but I don't agree with their temperature at all. These are, I'm gonna open one to make sure it's cooked all the way, just so you can see. See, it's soft, but still gonna be chewy. I'm so excited. <laughs> Sometimes I'll, I'll flip them too soon. And I poke the, uh, try not to poke holes in them with the chopstick. This is the perfect temperature. Actually, I turned it too low down. It's very hard to manage with the electric stove. But that's okay, we'll just, I'd rather have it a little lower than have it higher. Whoops, I'm gonna mess this one up. I'll show you the glaze Ella made. And it's, I'll tell, let her tell you what she put in it. It's powdered sugar, milk, a little bit of corn syrup. We'd put vanilla bean paste and a tiny bit of butter extract, or you could put melted butter. But Ella came up with the butter extract and said, that's brilliant. I love the butter flavor. And I learned that from Phyllis Stokes about the butter extract. I can't tell. That's good. Can I put the chicken Yeah, in? put the chicken back in. And put some garlic. I forgot the garlic. Check my... I don't want to turn it. <laughs> okay, I'm not... I don't want to make this video too long, but see... They're getting just right. And they're fluffy. Anyway, um, they need to fry a little bit on the other side. Because my oil did drop a little bit lower, so I had to turn it up just a pinch. Not on high, but just a little bit. It's a very important to have a thermometer. I'm gonna use this oil again just to see. If I, if I filtered it, it'd be it'd just fine. Uh, I'll figure out my hands get hot. But I'd like to take it off the burner. And then I put the lid on it. And I tell you, frying donuts, it doesn't really leave a bad smell in your house. Because we're, we're going to glaze them. Now, we're not sure if this glaze is going to, like, dry up like a donut place or whatever. Like, I'm not doing a video, like, better than Krispy Christ, Kreme or, or those things. You now people do those copycat videos. Anyway, let me show you what Elle and I made together. It's kind of like a fried rice, but it's like almost like a Chinese rice dressing. Can't wait to eat. So let me show you the donuts. So we just, Ellis just dipped them in the glaze and I put on this rack so they can drain. This glaze is so good. You could put a, a piece of bread in there and it would be delicious. And you probably saved the extra. So we're just gonna let them sit right here for a little while. And we tasted it and it's so, so good. This is, I've tried several recipes and this is by far my favorite. And I, I, this is the easiest dough I find to work with. So <clears throat> when I list, when I list, when I post the video, I'm gonna put the the weight measurements under the video. And I apologize, I don't have cups. I'm not I, I'm not good at uh, converting stuff like that. But I think weighing is uh, more accurate. I, and if you like to bake a lot, I would invest in this scale. Just my opinion. I think they came out really good. And here's the, did we show you the finished product of yeah. these? We sorry. forgot the green onion. Oh yeah. Hectic tonight. But I just want you to see how soft and pillowy they are, but they're still chewy. And they smell really good. I wish you guys could smell them through the screen. <laughs> It's so good. I don't want to eat a lot before I really eat supper. I am super happy with these. And I've worked really hard at this recipe. I don't know 
I just wanted to make a, the best I could. And these are so, so good. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I gave you some tips. And it's always nice spending time with you guys. I appreciate you spending time with me, taking time out of your day to watch my videos. And uh, I'll see you next time. Hopefully soon. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.